Hi there, it's Miracle, and today I decided to let my hair get its own way and maybe finally make peace with it. I don't know, but you gotta deal with this hair, but it's okay because we're all here for the books. I believe everyone has noticed it is the end of June. That means the Reading Women Challenge Reading Zone is nearly the end. And let me know if you have already completed the challenge of reading a poetry collection from a female writer, because if you haven't, I'm here to recommend you five poetry collections plus one bonus one, and then a single poem. The first poetry collection I'm going to recommend is my favorite in 2017, and it is Depression and Other Magic Tricks by Sabrina Bannon. This book took me into the world of poetry, and I fall in love in the first poem called The First Date, and then I fall in more love with a poetry in the middle called Explaining My Depression to My Mother, A Conversation. Speaking of that poem, I highly, highly recommend a video that performed by Sabrina Banner herself. It's touching, it's moving, and it's beautiful. It made me realize that to fully enjoy a poem, we need to read it out loud. Meaning if we are reading a poetry collection and no one is around us, or no one can hear us, or you don't care if anyone can hear you, you can read it out loud to enjoy it more. I'll link the performance video in the description box down below, and please, please go check it out. You won't regret it. The second poetry collection I recommend here is this Every Man's Library's Pocket Poets edition of poems from Emily Bronte. Well, I haven't read all of the poems from this book because there are so many. I loved the ones that I read. And I think reading this book, we can understand Emily Bronte more as a person and her attitudes towards life and her pride when living. Not like modern poetry, sometimes they don't rhyme. Emily Bronte's poems rhyme beautifully and the language is always elegant. And also with this pocket edition, we can read it anywhere. The third book I'm recommending here makes me think a lot and that is why God is a Woman by Nin Andrews. This is a fictionalized prose poetry talking about a character, a boy from the island called the island, where boys are the minority in the social structure and women have power to control the world. Men in this island got judged by their look, they got body shaming a lot, they have limited career choices, and they are materialized, and also they don't feel safe alone. So as you can tell, it is basically the mirror of our real world, just to switch the gender. At first, I didn't understand why the author do that, because she can just set the world on the island as the same as our real world. But then I realized it is only when you are flipping the gender, you can see all the abnormal in our social structure. The next the next poetry collection I'm talking about here is this Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Wu Shan Shera. This is a powerful little book, talking about, as the title suggested, the relationship with our close relatives, but also about love, about beauty, and what touched me the most is about how war shifted the people's mind and also formed the people's identity. It delivers the message that our past is always in our body, it's inescapable, but also very distant from our real life, and also it's untouchable but yet unforgettable. I got hurt so much when reading the poems about war, but also because of that, it's able to stay with me for a long time. And next, I got a poetry collection that is translated from Chinese, and it's published in a bilingual form. You got Chinese here, and then you got English here. And it's called 有什么在我心里一过? Something Crosses My Mind by a very well-known Chinese modern poet, Wang Xiaoni. Her style of poetry writing is simple but vivid. In this poetry collection, you got the poems from when she's traveling, from her daily life, and from when she's in the countryside. They seem simple, but one thing I think Chinese poets do the best is metaphor. Wang Xiaoni uses metaphor wisely in her book and mixing with her lyrical language writing, and it's such a pleasure to read. And now moving on to my bonus record. I am recording this because it's a poetry collection that is in Chinese. I hope one day it will be translated into other languages because it's very beautiful. I'm talking about 我坐在火山的最边缘 by Bao Huiyi. The English title would be I'm sitting on the edge of a volcano. Bao Huiyi is my favorite Chinese poet, and she's the one that makes me think maybe poets they have different eyes from us, the normal person, and their language systems are not the same as well. And they are able to discover and experience more in life, and also in dream, and also in history, in myth, and maybe from the universe, they deliver the message to us. 
I really really wish her poems can be translated into other languages one day. Actually, she got her PhD by studying ancient English in Dublin, and now she's teaching English at one of the top Chinese universities, so I think she's capable to translate her own poems into other languages. So if you are a publisher out there, and the last, I got one other single poem to recommend. It is also a video performed by the poet herself. The poet is called Amy Mahmoud, and the poetry, the poem is called How to Translate a Joke. I'll link the video down below in the description box. It's funny, it's ironic, it's deep, but also very, very sad. I highly, highly recommend you to check it out. And that's it for this video. And now you got five poetry collections to try in English, one in Chinese, and also one single poem that you can try. I hope you are doing really well in this Reading Women Challenge readathon. And more importantly, happy reading. See you next time. Bye.